This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 160. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. Ow. Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, Games Workshop showed off the Battle Force prices for the new Orcs and Custodes boxes. One of my miniatures was featured by Warhammer Community, and I bought some stuff on your guy's recommendation. But first, have you ever found yourself needing a website of your very own, but designing all four corners yourself seems daunting? Well, today's sponsor Squarespace is here to help. Squarespace allows anyone to break into website design with easy to use features like the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from a professionally curated selection of styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Squarespace makes it easy to launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Squarespace's system allows you to stretch your creativity through tools like the drag and drop features so you can really freestyle your way to the website of your dreams or your own online storefront. Whether your services are physical, digital, or service-based, selling your wares has never been easier with Squarespace's seamless checkout tools. With a Squarespace website, your customers can use whatever payment system they prefer. Whether it's credit cards, PayPal, Apple Pay, Afterpay, or Clearpay, selling your unique wares has never been easier. Squarespace offers a free trial for you to dip your feet into and test the waters. And ready to dive in head first, you can go to squarespace.com slash eonsofbattle, or you follow the link in the description below to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Games Workshop has finally, finally shown off the commended entries from Adepticon. And the one that stuck out to me was good old Stompy. Ah, displayed beautifully on the Games Workshop web store. The picture was was decent. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't perfect, but it, was, it wasn't bad. And I like to think, because at Adepticon, they just had like a little tent set up. Really, it was just like canvas walls. And so I like to think that like they had like a, just a macro or like they had a little tiny camera lens and they had to like press themselves up against the back wall of their little tent to actually get the whole thing in frame because it's really hard to get a picture of it, especially when every single other thing in the case was these little tiny like one inch tall miniatures. Getting an actual picture of Stompy is a challenge and it was really cool to have him on there. Ah, Stompy is a commended entry for Golden Demon and I have big plans for his little brother. Like, oh, he's, it's going to be really, really good. It's going to be really funny that the humongous Reaver Titan is going to be like the eh one and the little Warhound Titan, the little Warhound Titan, which is still unbelievably huge, is going to be the perfect one. And Stompy was entered into large vehicles and uh, large miniatures, which is like everything. It's basically the flip side of single miniature. And so... But he, he would also fit really nicely into 30K. I don't know if 30K is going to be like a less competitive category, but there could there could be something to it. I also want to have on the base a tank on fire, and I really like the new 30K Lehman Russ, just a little bit more than the 40K Lehman Russ. So there could be something to having the 30K Russ just burning on the ground because my Warhound is going to have both arms with the heavy, the ultra mega heavy flamethrower. And so yeah, I'm thinking, thinking I might go that way. Although there's also, I mean, I'm gonna do that. But I, there's also, I kind of want to enter the, the, yeah, it's not the diorama slash dual category. They changed all the categories around this year. But I do kind of want to do the Tau getting shot at by an orc. Cause yeah, I just, it seems funny to me. Like a Tau with like one little, one little drone held up in front of him that's just taking the brunt of all of the orcs' bullets. That could be a really, really funny diorama. B, oh, can I get two entries done? I think last year I said I was going to do like four entries and uh, barely got one done. So I'm sure next year is going to go great. It's going to be absolutely perfect. But speaking of things that are absolutely perfect, a few weeks ago, I asked for your guys' recommendations of miniatures that would be good count as is for gremlins. Gremlins, one of my all-time favorite movies, and you guys came through. I think it was Crooked Dice Greeblies. They are like the perfect thing to represent gremlins. I'm gonna use them in the game Don't Look Back. I got those guys all ordered. And so I actually have two more requests for you guys. Number one, like who out there makes the best Bigfoot or Yeti? 
like the best one. Cause I just, I like there, I've seen a sea of Bigfoot models, but it's hard to know like, is this the one I pulled the trigger on? Or is there a better one just around the corner that I've just never heard of? And the second ask is, do you guys know of anybody out there who's made a really good 10th edition cheat sheet? I've found myself needing to teach people 10th edition recently, and my cousin wants to play 10th edition, and 10th edition is a mess. It's probably the best edition of Warhammer 40k, but it is a nightmare of compounding rules. And so I know like Arbiter Ian back in the day for 6th and 7th edition Warhammer, he made like the best cheat sheet rules for the for that edition of Warhammer 40k. So anybody has anybody out there made a really, really good like read this document first version of Warhammer 40,000 10th edition. I was playing with Scott and we played Count Patrol and it was one of Scott's like he hasn't played a 10th or hasn't played Warhammer 40k in a long time. And so but he plays tabletop games, so he sort of gets it. But then you get into like fuzzy territory of like objective secured and then the banner adds plus one, but then you get a negative mod. Like it, it, there are all of these rules, the way that they stack, it can very easily be like, sure, I understand how that works. And then two more things get added on top. And then all of a sudden shh, it just goes over the other person's head. And anybody who plays 40 K a lot can totally get the rules down. I do think that they're the best rules for Warhammer 40 K we've gotten so far, but it is, it is a really, really tricky game system. In my game with Scott, I played the Overwatch stratagem, which is a perfectly fine thing. Like anybody who plays 10th edition knows that Overwatch is in the game. And so you have to be careful of like, does this weapon have torrent? Is there, do they have a thing where they can make a six pop off on their grenades thing? But I just thought it'd be a fun thing to do. Like he moved within range of me. And so I thought I'll do Overwatch and kill off like two of his models with lucky sixes and it'll just be a fun thing to happen in the game. I rolled really good on my torrent weapon and then I rolled a six on my grenades or the um, demolition charges for my gene stealer cult truck. And I like wiped out more than half the squad. And it was, yeah, it was a total feels bad moment, but, but that's 40 K that's what is supposed to happen. You're supposed to make those decisions knowing like the core book, 10 stratagems that could go off at any time. And, and like, you should know those. And then anything that happens from their actual like detachment ability is like, sure, whatever, I'll just run with it and assume that you're getting it all right. But yeah, 10th edition is a, it's not a nightmare of a game. It's really fun, but it is like from the outside looking in, it is, you know, it's not Catan. <laughs> you can explain the rules for Catan in like four minutes. 10th edition, a little bit more advanced. But speaking of things that are a little bit more advanced or more expensive or just more, the battle forces for orcs and custodies have been shown off. Weirdly, they're 210 bucks a pop, which is a little bit better than the previous ones. I think the Dark Angel one was the most expensive at 230, but uh, the savings are okay. The orc box has a very good savings, adding up everything that comes in the orc box. It's $366 for a savings of $166. So I guess you could kind of look at it as you're getting a Stompa for free. But would anyone have gone out and bought a Stompa? Stompa is so bad right now in the index rules. And just a preposterous unit to actually bring in games of Warhammer 40k. It's yeah, it comes with uh, Two squads of Ludas, which can be built as Burnas. It comes with the truck, it comes with boys, and it comes with the new mech. It's it's okay. The The problem with it is that Stompa, because you have to decide right now if you're going to be a Stompa player or not. Because, you know, everybody can use beast snaggers, everybody can use boys, everyone can use trucks. Like, those sorts of things are probably going to be in your list all the time. Stompa? I feel like a Stompa is going to be like a special occasion type of model. Like, I go, you know, I want to go to the store and I just want to have a weird day. I'm going to bring the Stompa. That's that's the sort of unit it is. Even if they made the rules good, it would just be weird if if people were bringing, you know, if you're going up against an orc player and you're like, I bet they bring the Stompa. It's just it's just not going to happen. It's a Titanic unit. It's it's this the orc version of an Imperial Knight that is nowhere near an Imperial Knight in stat lines. It is it's really it's a weird thing to come in the battle force. It's probably kind of fun. Like if you're if you're an orc player who's got everything you need, then maybe the battle. Well, but then you don't need more boys and you probably don't need more Ludas. 
The Battle Force is weird. I feel like it's not a must have at all. The Custodes one, however, is pretty darn good. You get two squads of the Terminators, you get the Wardens, you get the uh, the jet bikes, the Dawn Eagle jet bikes, which you can build one of those as the commander on Dawn Eagle jet bike. Like it does, does seem like a really good box. And the Custodes are just a more bang for your buck army in general because the units are so expensive points wise in game that like every custody is worth it. Although then Games Workshop is like, like Games Workshop still going to get your money though, because the vehicles are all forge rolled and they're horribly expensive. So even though you're saving a lot of money up front on buying way fewer models than anybody else, then if you really want to like bulk out your army, kind of got to make some forge rolled purchases, which I guess now it's all Warhammer purchases, but you can definitely still see the price disparity between things that used to be on Forge Rolls web store and things that are now on Warhammer.com, which I'm still having, I'm still struggling with getting that through my head that they're, they're now conjoined and there's no games workshop technically kind of sorta. It's just Warhammer.com. Neither of the battle forces look super exciting to me, but you know, what always looks exciting. The terrain available on our Patreon. This month, we have the Mining Colony Terrain and Vehicles, utilitarian machines that are more than they appear, designed to ride across the landscape, firing stolen weapons, or tunneling underneath to lay traps. And the mine and containers make for thematic and useful terrain. The colony is ready to uprise. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings on here at Eon's Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain. You can follow the link in the description below or sign up to our newsletter. I didn't get a ton of good hobbying done this week, although I did get a fair bit of paint on some miniatures, and you guys will be seeing those in the not too distant future, but I do feel like I'm already falling behind on my Golden Demon 2025 entries because I haven't started yet. And like, and it's fine. I've got plenty of time today, but then tomorrow I'll have a little less time. And then the day after that, I'll have a little less time. So I really, I really got to get a move on, but I'm excited for it. Thanks for watching.